So there are two sutras which talks about which explains about two higher stages of meditation that I picked up uh, a little bit last time. Vitarka vichar ananda asmita anugamat sampragyata. So there are four stages that uh, that helps you to understand your own experiences in meditation. That is what we discussed. So there are four stages of higher meditation, which is known as Vitark, Vichar, uh, Ananda, no, Asmita or Ananda Asmita. Uh, from the physical to the subtle, then it becomes subtler. So it means the master is saying that very joy that is coming from inside is subtler. And subtlest is awareness of I am. Not I am a teacher, I am a beard, I am a male. No, I am only. But when all these four objects disappear in meditation, it takes us to the higher stage of meditation. Here comes the Lara. So very good. So do you remember in the last talk we understood clearly? What did we understand? That the existence is our father. What exists because of existence? Like water is existence for waves, foam, storm, flood, cloud. Did you get it? Similarly, that existence is one with the millions of species, living beings, includes all of us. That is how we understand uh, some of the concepts of Eastern wisdom. Eastern wisdom, now what is that Eastern wisdom in relation to the existence? So Eastern wisdom, we say it is an instrument of knowledge. What kind of a knowledge? To know the subjective reality. That is what Patanjali says. By meditation, I discover the real self, and that is what is known as awakening. So Master says it is the royal secret. But it is an open secret. <laughs> it is a royal secret. And it is an open secret. Only the seeker can access to it. <laughs> now, Ed, you know, think of it. It is a royal secret. Krishna says in Gita, uh, this knowledge is a royal secret. And it is an open secret. Are you a seeker? You can get it. You see the very uh, right condition has been put. Now, two, two words I explained, the Eastern wisdom, existence. Now, this Eastern wisdom acts like a mother to her baby. Do you remember? What is the baby? Baby is the intellect. This intellect must get the right knowledge. Clear? So once it gets the right knowledge about what is real self, follows by the practice, and we are done with it. We should understand different stages of meditation. Why? Oh, you, we have been sharing experiences. So based on the experiences, we can determine which stage we are in. Now, to meditate is one thing. And to understand what is happening in meditation is totally another. Do you agree? I close my eyes, focus on the breath, mindfulness is done. What did we understand? <laughs> what did we understand? So, to meditate is one thing. 
and to understand what is happening in meditation is totally another. It is practicing meditation definitely is one thing. So now let us understand what is happening in meditation. So the mind is and the intellect is very clear where we are going. The level of a seeker means the state of your mind and the intellect. Now link this Eastern wisdom educates her baby intellect. The level of the seeker means the state of the mind and the intellect. His body remains steady during the practice, mind remains calm, intellect remains clear. That is the first factor. The second factor is clarity of goal or destination guided by the knowledge and faith. I'm coming to that. We are understanding meditation in a stepwise. So second factor that is also very important, is my intellect very clear about the goal of meditation? I know I heard it, goal of meditation is to relax and calm down. You can relax and calm down by taking pills. Start taking the pills, remain relaxed. We should be very clear about the goal. And what Patanjali says, what is the goal? Tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam, realizing my real nature. And it demands knowledge plus faith. What is faith? Should you believe me? No. Faith in Eastern wisdom, the word is known as Shraddha. And the literal meaning of Shraddha is holding the mind onto the goal. Now, see, we, we are not talking of the blind faith. This mind is emotionally charged so that it is holding itself on the real self. And who understands the real self? The intellect. You know, when we start meditation in the beginning, huh, we say, you know, it's all about blind faith, you know, why to waste your time closing your eyes? Don't waste your time. If you sleep for eight hours, keep your eyes open, continue working. <laughs> I have not a reason for those people. Anyhow, now the another part, the faith, I have explained the faith. Now it is like we travel to a destination. We know we will reach there because we have arranged everything. You want to come to my house? How many miles? 40 miles. You have a car, gas in the car. You know the driving. You see that? All these factors similarly is very important in meditation or mindfulness. If we do not become aware of those factors, then we do not succeed in meditation. Uh, then what happens? Mostly you, we blame teachers. You know, that teacher is good. This meditation is good. That meditation is bad. How can the meditation be bad? How the sugar in your house is bad and how the sugar in my house is good? Delusion. That is what I started. So now come to another understanding of meditation. Huh? So we are understanding the 17th and the 18th Sutra, the two higher stages of meditation. So I will take up the 18th Sutra in detail, but before that we should understand what happens. While meditating, are you aware that the mind is meditating? And we are aware that we are a meditator. First understanding. Little deeper, not very tough. When we are aware that the mind is meditating. One, and we are aware that we are a meditator. That is, 
the four stages of first higher meditation, which is known as Sampragyat Samadhi. Means you are aware that you are a meditator and the mind is meditating. Clear? Now what happens? That meditator also merges into the meditation. That is still the higher stage. You, awareness is there, but that I am is lost. Are you getting it? What happens then? In that state, Satoguna increases at peak. Raju and Tamoguna are minimized. That is the moment when you say, I was in meditation, it passed by in few minutes, and it is difficult for me to return from the meditation because you are not there. You see how logically Patanjali, our master, explains. So we got the understanding of uh, the very process of meditation. Now see that. That very meditator is absorbed into the meditative state or what we say the higher state of consciousness. When that I-ness is not there, can there be an anxiety, stress, duality, conflict? Answer is no. That is one of the greatest way to manage these mental challenges provided you are reaching to that state. I believe you all are seekers, you are listening to me. Uh, seriously, if I say so, let me pick up another uh, in a simplified manner, understanding of that meditation. We know that without mind, even the eyes, cannot see, ears cannot hear, the mind's mental awareness has to be there in these sense organs to acquire the knowledge of the world outside. Am I clear? Let us understand in a very logical manner. Sometime it what happens even if the eyes are seeing, but the mind is not with the eyes, then we do not see. Clear? Can I say, reflect on this, can I say senses are not different from the mind? Can I say that? Yes, we can say that. Senses are not different from the mind. Do you live into that awareness? The first stage of meditation. I spent about three months with another great master whose name is uh, U.G. Krishnamurti, not J. Krishnamurti, U.G. Krishnamurti. He has written a famous book on myth of enlightenment. So I used to ask crazy questions. So the fan was moving. There was a big noise. I said, I see this fan moving with the noise. First, there is a movement. And then there is a noise. How do you see it? He said, I see that movement and the noise are totally separate in my consciousness. I think I talked about that before. Totally consciousness. It blew my mind. I said, there is a sweet shop. No, I simply read sweet shop. It doesn't trigger any impression of the shop with the sweet. Can I live into that state? What a beautiful state. Now come to the second state. Second stage is that mind is my mind is not different from the knowledge. Your mind my mind. 
then there is a difference are you getting it i'm not so huh? it's not so complex the first is uh, senses are not different from the mind that is why we experience those visions in the colors in the during the practice of meditation you know that is our topic mind is not different from the knowledge when you live into that awareness there comes a spontaneity it is still the higher stage of meditation <clears throat> third stage the knowledge in the mind is not different from the absolute knowledge of the real self that is what is known as awakening now the result when the senses are absorbed in the mind it removes our negative attitude behavior and character second stage when the mind is not different from the knowledge, then what happens? The mind totally gets away with the binding desire that causes the delusion reaction problem. Mind becomes totally free. It doesn't mean that you don't work. You are working. You are living a professional life, personal life, social life. But mind, that mind becomes totally clear. Third, what happens? Can you guess? When my knowledge, my means I-ness, that I-ness is removed from the knowledge, it becomes one with the absolute knowledge. So what happens? In the third stage, that separative ego drops and awakening takes place. That is another, the higher stage of meditation. This is what Patanjali is explaining in these two sutras. What are the sutras? Vira, huh? Vitarka vichar. What he says, Vitarka vichar anand asmita. Rupa anu gamat sampragyat. So he is talking of the higher stages of meditation in which we pass through, the mind passes through the four stages of experiences. And once we cross that stage, then comes Virama Pratyaya Abhyasa Purva Sanskar Shesho Anyaha. So here the literal translation is that not only the thought the content of the mind that we recognize or they they are already gone the mind is totally empty not only that but the past impressions that has been accumulating into the mind is already gone so you live into that absolute knowledge so today we simply understand the very understanding Practicing meditation is one thing. So every day what will happen? Oh, I have seen what I have seen. I have seen huh? the entire world is living in me. It is because of the previous experiences, the past impression. The way I see you, the way you click the camera huh? for a picture that is for an image that is outside that is stored in the camera that is one way of looking at meditation but the second thing is that we also have an inner camera that takes pictures of the past impression so it has picked up the past impression of joy with an object in meditation. You realize that joy can come without an object also. You 
if you understand very good if you do not understand that too is very good let us start our practice <laughs> close your eyes close your eyes and then we will share our experiences 